Victor Gamoff has spent a lot of time teaching people how to use the Spring Framework and Kafka together. He's the author and instructor of the Spring and Kafka course on Confluent Developer, and I've got him back on the show today to talk about that course and related things. Before we get to that, always a reminder, uh, streaming audio is brought to you by Confluent Developer. That's developer.confluent.io, the one place on the web that you need to go for everything Kafka and Confluent related. If you want to take a video course, if you want some executable examples, if you want to study a library of patterns for uh, event-driven architecture, it's, there's just so much stuff there. Check it out, developer.confluent.io. And if you do any of the examples and sign up for uh, Confluent Cloud to do those examples, you can use the code PODCAST100 to get an extra $100 off. So check it out. Now, let's get to Victor. Hello and welcome to another episode of Streaming Audio. I am your host, Tim Berglund, and I'm joined in the studio today by returning guest. I haven't even counted up how many times he's been on the show. Victor Gamov. Victor, welcome back. Yes, my usual joke about uh, many times, a long time listener, first time caller will not work uh, this time. And it actually works just once. And it's good exactly. to be here, Tim. Thanks so much and for having my me. usual joke with returning guests about this being the triumph of hope over experience. Um, it's kind of evergreen, actually. But um, anyway, what is different now uh, from from the last time you're on the show is that we don't work together anymore. Tell us what you're up to. Uh, where do you where do you work? What are you doing? Yes, I am a developer advocate with uh, Kong, a cloud connectivity company, where I am talking to developers about all things uh, connectivity and how they can build resilient, scalable apps and how we can help them with our software. Awesome. I believe you missed the word principle. You are a principle developer advocate. I mean, you I don't want to be, I, I don't want to be sound I, like I said too. it for you, though. <laughs> yes, I, I am a principal developer advocate at Kong. Right. Uh, now, but still, you... down to the earth, um, contributing as an individual as much as I can, meeting my people in uh, trenches, uh, meeting my people in conferences, in uh, not so many in conferences these days, right? But uh, meeting my, um, uh, my users online everywhere in the world. As, uh, as wonderfully as you've ever done it. Thank you. Um, and by the way, um, just as a side note, listeners, we're, we're going to talk about uh, Victor's Spring and Kafka course on Confluent Developer. That's what we're here to talk about today. We're going to get to that. But you know, it's me and Victor, and there might be some chit chat. Uh, we're recording this at the very end of August 2021. Just last week, Victor and I were in Krakow, Poland together at DevOps Poland. It was the first in-person conference either one of us had done since the start of the pandemic. Yeah, I it think feels it felt good, good, right? It felt, it felt good. good. It just yeah. felt really good. I think we can And uh, as a matter of fact, I was actually talking about uh, Spring and Kafka. So I think it is 100% related to the conversation of our today's, uh, today's episode. Absolutely. I was at that talk. So anyway, you are the instructor of the uh, Spring and Kafka course on Confluent Developer. Um, this was, uh, again, insider details, folks. Uh, this was Victor's last act as a Confluent employee, uh, heroically pushing to get this course written. It was labor of love. Come on. It was an exciting thing. Of course, labor of love. Love for your team and the time at the company and the technology and all that stuff. But it was it was a heroic push. Like I, I watched it happen from afar. And it's there. And you can go watch that course. And obviously, it's going to be prominently linked from the show notes. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk about Spring and Kafka, the course development, just your your process and your thoughts on all this. It's really just a chance to to talk. So let's start uh, with kind of core technical issues. Um, uh, Spring and Kafka. What what does Spring bring to the party? Uh, when is this appropriate? Why would anybody do it? Um, kind of give us your thoughts on that. Of course. Um, as I probably, if people seen me talking about Spring, I'm a huge, huge fan. So I didn't have any kind of like a uh, child issues with Spring when the ch ch Spring was like young. It hurt a lot of people and many people still have this kind of like memory. So that's why. 
I was yeah, there, yeah. Gandalf, some, three thousand years ago. Some people, some people were there, exactly. And uh, but uh, it's not your, you know, grandfather, father, or gr- your father's spring anymore. So it is cool. It's fast. It's super nice. And the main main goal as spring and uh, mainly spring boot these days is a main locomotion or driving this um, in the future. And specifically, developer experience is imp- incredibly important for the team. Uh, people are aware about, people have a complaints about, like, oh, the spring does that, spring does that, like, oh, we're, like, too opinionated. Yes, it is too opinionated. And it's a good thing to um, to get you going. It's uh, probably one of the one of the best frameworks and tools that exist today. Um, other frameworks either trying to mimic what the spring does and spring boot does or they're trying to reinvent the wheel which eventually will come into the similar places where the developers of the spring framework came up with um you either uh you either die a hero or live long enough because to become kind of the same thing as the spring framework i think is what you're saying yeah yeah exactly so uh not the wheel <laughs> in this in this particular case it's going to be like a good a good uh, good hero maybe you know you either die as a hero or you will wait long enough until um you will be invited to to marvel cinematic universe and you will get to reprise some different role and everybody will forget that you ever done i don't know human torch and people will right. remember you as a uh, as a captain america hey you know that the first fantastic four movie was it was, I think, was okay. I always thought it was uh, okay. Yeah, Sue Storm, Jessica Alba is wonderful in a lot of roles. I think she was miscast as Sue Storm. Um, I think it was a little bit of a miss, but um, uh, it was the movie. She she delivered on the role, and I think the movie held together. Yeah, I like the uh, um, the Mister Fantastic, uh, Ian. Yeah, Ian. yeah, yeah. He was he was all right he was again. Good. I a little young. I thought. I thought not. Didn't quite nail it because with Reed. Uh, you sort of need that middle-aged vibe. Like Reed's 45 or so. Um, and he was 30 if he was lucky. You know, so they, and you know, typical of an action movie, everybody needs to be of a certain age and that, that but age being let's young. agree that Julian McMahon was great as a Victor Wondum. I think yes, he, absolutely. he nailed as a, you know, total villain. Absolutely. And by the way, if you could have listened in to any number of Tim and Victor one-on-ones over the years, um, uh, uh, this is maybe twenty percent of them right here. <laughs> All exactly. right, so We're talking um, about talk. Yeah, so people, I want to ask. I want to ask a question. In opinions. case, let's talk about opinions. Let's talk well, about before opinions. we get opinions. I want to ask a question. If in case you uh, are, like are not a part of the Java ecosystem, but you still listen to this podcast, or you just have avoided Spring altogether, could you differentiate Spring Boot and Spring Framework? Like people say Spring, and you said they often mean Spring Boot, which is the case. Um, but what are the what's the distinction? Yeah, distinction is easy. So you have an engine and you have a very fast car. So Spring Framework is the engine, engine, engine. it's a heart. It is something that drives um, many things, many decisions that happen inside the frameworks and some of the frameworks that uh, surround uh, Spring ecosystem. Spring Boot gives you a vehicle where you jump in and uh, depend on um, your need, you might have very fast vehicle, just like a very fast reactive microservices for a web. Um, you will have a uh, power of uh, Spring Boot as a dependency injection, and uh, if you want to have something more or Spring Spring Framework as dependency injection, yes, Spring yeah. Framework always has been a kind of uh, system that allows you to do um, all sorts of like dependency injection things and uh, some of the uh, ways how you configure your application components. Yeah. And uh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So like. If you want to go in a very, you know, heavy, you know, data grinding system, uh, like a tractor, think about this. You will have all the frameworks around this, like a, a Spring Data, there's a Spring uh, Cloud uh, Data Flow, Data Stream. So there's plenty of different frameworks that allow you to build this machinery, but as a heart, as an engine, as like everything tied together, they tie it through the Spring Framework. And Spring Boot, uh, will give you this like a starter thing. You know, you know how to operate any car. Uh, spring Boot will give you this kind of feeling that you know that this is a Spring Boot and Spring Spring Framework is your engine, and after that, the rest of the components is like some additional appliances that you you can put in your car and make it either lighter or make it even faster, more robust, and uh, what have you. 
or bigger and heavier, but has more stuff like a, it's a tractor or a combine. It's not a car anymore. You know, you can, yeah. you can build specialized machinery. Uh, yeah. That's, that's not exactly. just for getting yeah. around town. Cool. All right. Love the, love the analogy. Um, but uh, opinions, uh, spring, spring opinions. And these are going to intersect with uh, springs wrapping of Kafka. So take us there. Yeah, exactly. So the mm, idea of um, opinions is kind of, sometimes people think, oh, like it's too opinionated or this person too opinionated. He has opinions about everything. Which creates this... Um, That's a little personal, but but go on. Yeah, I know. Um, the when you when you're talking about the person is opinionated or uh, something is opinionated, you know what to expect. Essentially, mm -hmm. if you're talking about someone about politics, you pretty much know what to expect from that person. Um, if you're talking about someone about some of the you know health and fitness and personal opinion, you pretty much know what this person will uh, with uh, the person's position with about something. Well, same thing with the framework. You know what to expect. If it's an opinionated, it will give you some of the stuff that gives you a quickly start. But apart from the being opinionated and apart of from providing opinions, it's always good when the person is flexible and uh, provides the kind of like a clear view to the thing. So you, you can say, yes, I, be, I am opinionated about certain things. However, I'm open to hear other people's opinion and I open to change my mind if those opinions are would be legitimate. Same or at thing least with, you'll give room for that other person to have his or her own opinions and sort of coexist in the same space. Yeah. like That's the best yeah. way to be opinionated. It might sound weird for you, but you know, you kind of allow it to do this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, right. yeah. Here's the here's the reference. Write down in the comments if you got the reference. So please, same please, thing that with line us. right there. Let us know if you got that. Go ahead. Um, yeah, in in the uh, in the opinions of Spring, it actually have clear path how you can change opinions of the Spring. If you don't like the way how the Spring does the things, you will be able to change it. And the Spring clearly identifies how we can do this. Many things that you can do there uh, will be able to, you will be able to change. If you don't like the way how the spring the handles um, <clears throat> or like uh, works with your uh, messages that you consumed or like automatically consume offsets or um, how many, if the spring behaves the same way as the GMS uh, application behaves, now uh, you could change that. And this is available. And as a developer, you will find the ways like, you don't need to change everything. You only change the things that don't you don't like personally, or it's somehow goes with the uh, as a problem with your opinions. That's that's pretty much it. So the rest of the stuff. Once you learn uh, to live in this uh, ecosystem, you will be pretty productive and uh, I'm not saying happy. You know, we're doing software development for a very long time. So happiness is not the word that we're looking for here. But you will be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Yes. And the goal is um, fuss with the plumbing less. That's that's the bigger thing that Spring can do uh, for you. A lot of... Uh, and this is kind of like a mo mostly... Uh, mostly Spring Boot thing because Spring Boot was created as a framework to drive this 12-factor manifesto and drive it as into production, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, allow you to focus on uh, things that are important for your application. And if you accept this, yeah, I am a 12-factor app, I'm building an application that would be uh, running in the cloud, will be running in uh, infrastructure that... Um, you know, my go down, my application will be rescheduled. So yes, I want to build resilient applications and cloud native applications. You embrace this, this you know, 12, 12 factor thingy. And uh, um, the way how the spring configures, um, the way how you can override some configurations, it is more or less standard. So regardless if you're running spring data application or you're running spring Kafka application, if you want to change something, I don't know, database URL in your spring data, and um, uh, bootstrap server for your Kafka application, you will be able to do this through you know, standard ways. For example, uh, you can have um, hierarchical configurations, for example, 
spring underscore Kafka, everything goes under this one and you will be able to change this configuration through environment variable. You want to change this uh, the URL for database, you're doing something similar like spring data and you go in and change it. And as you mentioned, as you, you point out, you're not tinkering with this uh, plumbing for, oh, I will write my own par parser for uh, property files. I'll write my uh. own parser for YAML file. Um, the good thing and is that you don't like YAML. Create logic throw away. for when environment variables will override things and, and all that. You you won't yeah. you won't write that code. Yeah, yeah. You just need to follow. You need to learn uh, what's the precedence Spring uses. It will be fine. Yeah. Now, um, what about so the uh, Spring? You know, famously wraps this, that, and the other piece of infrastructure. There are. Um, uh, templates and listeners and and uh, these kinds of things for for messaging frameworks and for databases. What uh, what's the what's the Spring Kafka abstraction? What are those opinions there? And are they good opinions in your opinion? Mm -hmm. um, in the course that uh, we were talking about on developer.conf.io. I tried to provide just like a, the bare overview of the things that are available for you. We didn't go very details on certain things um, available there. Um, during my run at Confluent, I did a lot of like uh, live streams where I uh, drill very deeper on the, some yes. of the, you know, the deep cuts on the Spring Framework and integrations based on some people's question. People wanted to say, hey, I have opinion about this and I don't like how it's done by default. Hey. I show you how we can do that. But in this course, I was trying to um, show how to get things done. Um, say you have a task, you want to produce a message to Kafka topic. So here's how we can do it. There's the Kafka template. And um, if you go into a little bit more in uh, in uh, future chapters of this course, you'll find another way. There is a Spring uh, um, Cloud Streams, which is uh, another approach how you can uh, solve the same task. Depends on you know what, what is closer to you. If you want to stay closer to home and uh, Java API for um, for Kafka is something that you enjoy and this is something you're comfortable, uh, Spring uh, Kafka gives you very thin wrapper that allows you to focus on that type of APIs. Where wrapper is around Spring? the producer and consumer. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. With the uh, Spring Cloud Stream, you'll have more opinion, again, more opinionated way where you're focusing on actual logic. And after that, plumbing and the framework and the conventions will fulfill the gaps. You're defining the function that will produce data. And after that, underlying technology will figure out how to take this data and turn it into something that Kafka will understand. We'll be talking about the binders uh, for, for Kafka. Um, those also like a much higher level abstraction. And mostly, um, maybe people will appreciate that if they will building some sort of like a data pipelines uh, uh, based on uh, Java code and functional code, and maybe even kind of like a, a running function as a service, which uh, framework will handle some of the plumbing and how the things will be connected to uh, underlying Kafka search. Okay. Other parts of Spring will uh, abstract away your functions as a service stuff, and okay, yeah. which is so, I mean the the benefit of Spring, right, is that there's a there's a kind of a wrapper and an abstraction for just about everything and which once is you have, um, once sometimes it can be uh, very overwhelming but mm -hmm. um there's an interesting thing the, the spring itself even though they accomplishing a lot of things in covering different frameworks it's not stay um the same over the time so it was i was not joking when you said when i said that it's, it's not like your 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 father's or your grandfather's framework a lot of things changed and based on the understanding and general uh, consensus among developers, uh, I'll give you a quick example with a framework that I like <laughs> and enjoy, the Spring Cloud Stream. Mm. So a lot of work in the Spring Cloud Stream was in, in influenced by um, Spring Messaging Framework that yeah. was using the messaging um, a system like a JMS as a transport. So that's why on the very early versions of this, you will find, it, it actually not the messaging, but rather than Spring integration, which was generic framework that allowed you to integrate different systems. Before 
uh, say Kafka become our kind of like a de facto integration uh, thing, uh, there are different people will build in different pipelines differently. It might be databases, there might be some GMS systems. So they will try to um, spring integration was kind of implementation of some of the ideas that were uh, described in the um, integra- uh, enterprise integration patterns. Yeah. Which is back there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, but over the time, um, those abstractions become not convoluted, but at least they, they become something that will uh, rather confuse people uh, than uh, give the, some good. So that's why with the Spring Cloud Streams version 3, they went to the point where, okay, so let's focus on the logic. Let's focus on functionality, functions rather than plumbing. And we as a framework were smart enough to figure out how to, you know, take your, your bytes and turn it into Kafka message. It's, okay. it's the same, same thing uh, all the time. We will just need to know what to invoke in order to get this data in case of producer, or we need to know where we can ship this data or these bytes in case of consumer. So in this case, you define a supplier. Uh, in case of producer, you define a Java supplier. You define a consumer as a Java consumer, as a receiver of this data from the framework. And uh, this convention of a configuration function-based approach change the way how you can think about your application. You're focusing only on the logic and the plumbing will be done. For you. Got it, got it. In the springy way of, of annotating and, and uh, I, I guess it's, it's, it's these days, it is really mostly- That's a neat part. And names. You don't, you don't even need to annotate these days. Oh. Um, everything is comes uh, with, there's one, one, one annotation is, is there is a bin, which is kind of standard way how you can tell that this is the component belongs to your um, to your application logic, but you don't need to specify like where this data come from. You can fully externalize it. And based on the things that I said before, those c- configurations can be changed. You have a YAML those in your development. Like YAML and, and environment variables and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You still have so an application. You, you have your YAML. YAML. That's your... Application.yaml or application.properties. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and after that, just override this uh, whenever you move to another environment. You know, yes. just like change this fifth environment variable and your like application logic and all this wiring will stay the same. Just only thing changes is bootstrap URL for, you know, uh, where are where, where is your Kafka is deployed basically. Of course, I, bearing those childhood wounds, will still always want to say application.xml. I don't think it'll ever leave me. Um, I believe you still will be able to do this. Oh, um, no, you can. Yeah, right. But, but probably you, you still don't. can do this. Yeah, you just one one does not simply. Um, yeah. So when you uh, moving to, you know, your actual design of this course, when you want to sit down because you know this very well, you've done, uh, you know, you did a year's worth of live streams episodes, not all on Spring, but that was a that was a very much a recurring theme. Um. So it's the thing you do a lot. So when you sit down and you want to build, you know, an hour, an hour and a half of video content, introducing someone to how to do Spring and Kafka, how to build things with Kafka using Spring, kind of assuming certainly that they've got some Java, they've probably got some familiarity with the Spring framework. Um, How did you break that down? Um, I'm kind of asking you what's the structure of the course, but I'm as much asking you, what's your thought process when you do that kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, when I thinking about how I will teach something or like transfer my knowledge to someone uh, with the the most productive way or most efficient way, so this person they would you know pick up this quickly. I was trying to think uh, from the point how I would love to learn things around you know certain subject. Um, so and. Um, the couple use cases will help, you know, over the time working with customers and working with developers, I understand first thing people want to see is just like connect to some Kafka and see that data is flowing and uh, have this kind of like a nice and fuzzy feeling that, ooh, data is coming. 
Um, and uh, this is like the first thing that people want to do. Like, okay, so I, I want I want to try this. Um, and in order to uh, in order to do this, uh, you need to have some data, some 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 there. I didn't want to kind of like a convolute this or like a overload this example by kind of like a I don't know like bringing connect into play even though that would be fun because I don't need to write the producer connect will be pumping some data and I'll have a consumer so in this case I decided okay so before I start reading data I need to bring some data in so I need to generate some data so that's why uh, usually I like to start with okay so you write there Next thing, we'll see how you can retrieve this data. And always um, uh, tools that um, provide uh, some of the UI, okay? So Confluent Cloud has a nice UI where you can see that the data is actually flowing there. So you don't need to write your consumer per se in order to see this. So that's why, like, first thing is one to do is just uh, produce a message, hello world message to, uh, to Kafka. And after that, UI will be able to uh, show um, all the things. And after that consumer and after the processing, you know, the processing mm -hmm. part is also important um, apart from being uh, just like a simple consumer that read the data and doing something like this. Um, I wanted people to see that Kafka Streams integrates very nicely uh, with uh, Spring Boot mentality. You know, Spring Boot will handle... Kafka Streams is a... It doesn't have any infrastructure to uh, to read configuration files or, or whatnot. Sometimes it's a... It, um, sometimes people complain about this. Is that this Kafka Streams doesn't have it and there should be some opinionated way. However, it's like, a, you know, Kafka and Kafka tools around this is like a Unix tools. You know, if you want to build something around this, you want to have some configuration for this, you will be able to do this thanks of the frameworks that are available, right? right? And this is where Spring, you know, comes into play in saying, hey, I can save the day. I yeah. know how you can configure your Kafka Streams. I've got all kinds of opinions about this, where Kafka exactly. Streams is wanting to be out of the business of having that kind of opinion. Exactly. And uh, as, um, as a developer, you just want to have a configured instance of your properties file that you will, or even like you want to have this uh, streams builder that already pre-configured. So you can have a, define your topology and this topology would be injected into um, streams builder would be created for you because it's just like a few, few more lines of, of code. Another thing is that Usually, people don't know what to do with uh, streams, uh, the Kafka streams instance, because you need to start this and like when you stop it, how you will clean up it. Spring helps you to handle this, and you only focus on your logic. So the next step, we have a producer, we have a consumer, we have a streams to 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 um, to process this, and you will see it in the, in the course if you will uh, take this. Which you should. Which you should. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of like idea where we're going from something that uh, you have a need, and uh, you go into the journey. On something journey. from something that you know plus a need that you have, uh, some something that you know that and that something you know already know plus something you want but don't have, and that brings people kind of into the educational process of the right. Of the course, that's a good way for it to do a, a talk. I, yeah, I like exactly. So the storytelling and the, like a plot design development and the things. There's like a concept of the hero journey. I like to follow this one and like yes. I, I like that it's it kind of like hero journey. Plus, there's like a, it's a hero, hero cycle. I don't know how it goes. Like eight steps, uh, then Harmon's cycle of uh, uh, of story and things like that. I want you to, you know, have a, like a full cycle. You return back home uh, changed. However, this change uh, will give you some new expertise that allows you to move in another cycle, in another cycle. Exactly. So that's why idea was approached this more from perspective of um, how to teach this and how to the, the help people to, you know, in, invite them for a journey. To, yes, um, yes. A journey that will change them in a positive way. Send them back home with new capabilities. Could not have said yes. it better myself. Since My I use this opportunity, yeah, ah. I want to use this opportunity also. Since we have uh, listeners and we're talking about some of this stuff about learning Kafka, I want to say that um, it's very, it's almost September, and meaning that the Manning's Kafka in Action book is coming to book shoulders. 
Yes. And uh, this is a book uh, where I co-author with uh, my colleagues, uh, Dylan Scott and Dave Klein from Confluent and Dylan Scott from uh, from Community. He started this project and uh, we helped uh, him to, to finish this journey. So uh, for our listeners, we'll put some uh, code there so you can uh, get the um, early access program and get some discounts if you're interested in this type of reading. And again, the idea of this book, there's like plenty of good uh, Kafka books that go a little bit like inside things and talk about some of the uh, cool, exciting uh, guts of this uh, exciting system. We, we try to approach with the you know more practical things, like what right. kind of practical things you need to know um, and uh, in order to use Kafka like efficiently. So Kafka in action, come into your bookstores. I will sign every copy, you know, whenever or wherever you will find me. I will do that. So, you can. Thanks for this opportunity to you can uh, take his word something. for that. He will do that. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I was extremely excited that I had this opportunity to to share some of my knowledge about the things. So, like, uh, I was super excited with the uh, when the course was released earlier this year. Um, so, yeah. My guest today has been Victor Gamov. Victor, thanks for being a part of Streaming Audio. It was a pleasure, team, as always. And uh, it was Victor Gamov. And as always, have a nice day. And there you have it. Thanks for listening to this episode. Now, some important details before you go. Streaming audio is brought to you by Confluent Developer. That's developer.confluent.io, a website dedicated to helping you learn Kafka, Confluent, and everything in the broader event streaming ecosystem. We've got free video courses, a library of event-driven architecture design patterns, executable tutorials covering KSQL DB, Kafka streams, and core Kafka APIs. There's even an index of episodes of this podcast. So if you take a course on Confluent Developer, you'll have the chance to use Confluent Cloud. When you sign up, use the code PODCAST100 to get an extra $100 of free Confluent Cloud usage. Anyway, as always, I hope this podcast was helpful to you. If you want to discuss it or ask a question, you can always reach out to me at TLBerglund on Twitter. That's T-L-B-E-R-G-L-U-N-D. Or you can leave a comment on the YouTube video if you're watching and not just listening, or reach out in our community Slack or forum. Both are linked in the show notes. And while you're at it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and to this podcast wherever fine podcasts are sold. And if you subscribe through Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a review there. That helps other people discover us, which we think is a good thing. So thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time.